as we walk around our homestead today and talk more about permaculture and the principles that underlie it. Um, we hope you'll notice some of the larger design features such as putting the animal housing near our house so that we can always easily take care of them without having to schlep off you know, on a long walk in the snow, for instance. Bringing the wood up to the house so it's easily available. Things like that that save some labor and are design smart. We also hope that you'll be interested in learning more. Of course, we have this fantastic concert where you can learn through music with Charlie McGee coming up. Also, as I mentioned before, I help to lead the Seacoast Permaculture Group and we have a meetup site and tons of really interesting classes that tend to fill up. Um, there's a lot of people interested in this right now, so we're part of a growing movement to change the way we live on the planet, and we hope that you'll join us in the Seacoast Permaculture Group and through WSCA, which is another piece of that connecting puzzle that we're putting together. Whatever food growing system a person is working in, whether it's vegetables or animals, it all really starts with the soil. Also in terms of producing no waste, everything that comes out of our kitchen that we don't eat, we find a home for here. Either our animals eat it, or we do have an outdoor composting system. And even in the winter when it's tough to get to it, we have our indoor worm bin, which we feed up here, and the second tier system means a lot of it drops down, and you can see all the happy worms down there turning our leftover scraps into fantastic fertile worm castings for the garden. This is a single purpose water reuse system. When we replaced the pressure tank for our, our well, our pump system, I cut the top off of the old one with an abrasive disc on a skill saw and I put it on cinder blocks high enough to get enough pressure. So then after bathing or showering, <coughs> I use this pump, this marine pump, 12 volt, powered off of a car battery star starter, car starter, 12 volt supply, through these clips onto the, uh, onto the pump to pump the water into this tank. And from here, it just gravity feeds into the tank of the toilet. So we never have to use water from the well to flush this toilet. That's particularly good not only because it takes a lot of energy to pump water out of the well, it also means we have five to ten flushes ready and waiting for every time we get the next week-long power outage, which happens out here in Barrington. The other side of season extension and obtaining a yield is to have enough produce and meat to get you through the winter. So here we do a lot of canning. I do at least 75 quarts of peaches and other fruits, berries, tomatoes, high acid fruits. We also freeze a lot. We have this nice chest freezer and find all sorts of stuff such as blueberries, our own meat, and We've got green beans, there's kale, and we make a lot of pesto. Keep our basil feeding us year round. So I built this wood wall, which serves num numerous functions, one of which being simply getting all that wood out of my way. And it also stacks functions because this wall blocks the noise and sight of the road, which is particularly important here in the goat yard where dogs being walked might spook the goats. This is Coco and her friend Honey, and they are our brush clearers. Um, here in New England, the piece of property we were able to buy was covered in trees and brush, and they eat that happily. They love it. It's really what they're supposed to eat. And um, in return, they give us good manure for the garden, and she's actually very pregnant, so she'll be giving us babies and milk soon, and some love. I know what they're like, and you're very efficient about it.
Another important permaculture principle is to obtain a yield. Hopefully, some of you have seen Charlie McGee singing about this in his fantastic song, Yield. Here's an example. Even in the spring, we can see that what we planted is starting to come up. Our gardens really focus on food crops so that it can help us to become more sustainable, to fill our basic needs. This is garlic here coming up out of the mulch in April. We value renewable resources, that of wood and of human power. In permaculture, another principle is to design from patterns to details. This is a really ancient pattern, that of terraces, also known as swale and berm. It's a way to use a slope that prevents erosion, captures resources, and still gets you a crop. It's also a really lovely thing to see emerging from the snow here. This is a chicken tractor, which is um, very common in permaculture settings. It's a way to contain your birds, such as chickens, and bring them into your garden, have them on your land, have them still be protected so they're not off in their own little coop without the ability to get new forage or put their manure in new places, um, but they also can't sort of run amok and tear up everything that you have, and they are protected, as I said. We get great stuff from our honeybees. They pollinate our crops with joy, and of course we get sweet, delicious honey out of the deal, as well as wax. to help make our harvest season longer here where we have such long winters, starting seedlings indoors gives me the opportunity to get crops out there faster and sooner and get more out of them. It also makes the winter seem a little less long when I have these babies growing in my window. Diversity is another important aspect of permaculture. Um, we all know that biodiversity is really important. When you start your own seeds, your options are so much larger um, for getting a diverse mix um, genetically in terms of lots of different choices from different places. In fact, some of those seeds that I started, there's a kind called blue scotch kale, and that is a strawberry bank heirloom variety, which they found on their property um, a few years ago. And now people, gardeners all over the seacoast and beyond, are growing that out again, recapturing that resource. To heat our home, we're making our own firewood off our own land, so it doesn't have to be shipped from elsewhere at all. Um, the wood is enough to heat most of the house with one of these relatively new, nice, efficient stoves. And if you look above, we also take advantage of the heat of the sun with these passive solar self-facing windows with thermal shutters for the nighttime. We also like to harness the power of the wild critters that are here anyway. Here's a bat house. Um, we also have some bird houses up and of course a lot of forage in terms of our plants both support and use the work of the wild creatures in our neighborhood anyway. And saving species that are endangered is important. Most of our chickens are Dominiques, which are the original breed created by settlers in New England. Um, and we also have one Wyandotte. Both of these breeds are on the Slow Food Arc of Taste as well for having extremely delicious products. The word permaculture was originally developed in Australia by Bill Mollison and David Holmgren and it was a melding together of permanent and agriculture. 
and was really an attempt to address the huge unsustainable issues going on in agriculture. It has since expanded to look at water, other land use, um, money, energy, everything that has to do with living together on the planet. Permaculture also focuses on community. We believe that people have lived together in groups for a long time and that we work better together as people. Um, it also means we don't have to be experts at everything or do everything ourselves. There's bartering and working together and helping each other that has been a uh, standard amongst humans for a long time and we think should really be focused and emphasized to make our lives and our work more meaningful and easier. There are 12 principles of permaculture that have been developed so that people in every place on the planet can refer to those to help them design what works for them. So it's not so much that you have to do certain things as you have to look at this certain framework of permaculture or you can use this certain framework, permaculture, to help you figure out what's going to work in your particular situation. The first principle of permaculture is observe and interact. And the last one is creatively use and respond to change. So you see that permaculture is partly an experiment that we're all in together to help us figure out the best way to sustainably live on the planet.